for uh, taking up. So I just go back. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again, Harini, for for the good introduction and uh, taking us through what Chat GPT uh, uh, will be and uh, giving us the opportunity to present it today. And I think uh, when you ask that question, uh, if someone has tried Chat GPT, I was just seeing the chat, and I think Harris has also mentioned. So very so many people are using Chat GPT uh, these days. I think it has come up as a good buzzword. And now it has it is slowly becoming a norm that people are trying to play around with it because it gives really good responses and people are loving it. And so today in our session, uh, you'll get to know uh, the basics of chat GPT, what it is, what it is being used for, and also the business implications of it, how you can use it on in your daily basis uh, within your business and how and when these applications uh, business applications will be integrated with chat GPT. So uh, I think uh, no need to give much of a uh, basic introduction about chat GPT. So it's just the machine learning and natural language processing model to generate responses. But the interesting thing here is it, it gives you the responses uh, in a sort of conversational form, how humans interact and how humans humans chat. Uh, just before, before chat GPT, we used to have uh, chatbots or AI chatbots and the I, I would call them as FAQ chatbots, which were like rule based. You have to provide the instructions and it will just throw out that. If it's out of control, it will just redirect you to the human. But when you interact with chat GPT, the real difference is it gives you a response in a very structured manner. And the computing power is so fast that it's a real time response. It doesn't take much of time uh, to respond. And I think uh, most of you have already tried it uh, going on to open AI and try to uh, ask ma as many questions to chat GPT. Uh, so basically it can write essays or articles for you, poems, emails, code, and many other things like which, which you couldn't even think of. It, and it, it gives interesting responses. I played around with it a lot, like when it just launched and like I was blown away seeing the responses. Uh, and then I also wrote one of the interesting article on acceleration economy about it and how it can be integrated into uh, the business applications in the future. And recently I've seen uh, Microsoft acquisition uh, with OpenAI, which is the uh, creator of ChatGPT. Uh, and recently Microsoft has launched its capabilities within their Dynamics 365 with the ecosystem. We'll discuss it uh, a bit later in the slides. Uh, so can, can you just move on to the next one? And yeah, thanks. So the question is how it can help our business analysts, this awesome community present here, so I was just playing around with it. And then I uh, also being an MVP, I get early access to uh, most of the Microsoft products and the previews. Uh, there, when I was using the Dynamics 365, I got to know that it can be an awesome thing for a BA because most of the task, uh, daily basis task for a business analyst is about, you know, going into the meetings, getting those requirements, and then do a lot of communication work, writing and drafting those emails, keep track of documents it's, it's a lot of work i know like i know quite a few bas in our uh in our hospital model hospital as well and it's it's a lot of work apart from you know what you guys designed the process maps and everything those are the core things but uh alongside you keep uh documenting things you draft nice emails interact with the stakeholders so when i uh, looked at chat gpt i was asking quite a few questions to it so it can definitely draft a nice email uh, after your conversation uh, with your client. So just imagine a situation, I'll just give you a sort of real-based scenario that you have organized a meeting with your stakeholder uh, about requirement gathering, right? After you are done with the meeting, let's like suppose the meeting was on Teams, after you're done with the meeting, you keep writing the notes. Just imagine uh, Microsoft uh, with its AI features, it has got all the verbal communication and extracted everything automatically. And after your meeting, it also structured a formal email with all being discussed as sort of minutes of the meeting. And it doesn't even stop here. When you ask it to create a functional requirement document, it creates a functional requirement document automatically in a very structured way. We'll see later in the slide, I also put a snippet there where it has actually converted a verbal uh, Verbal, verbal conversation into a functional document and which is very, very accurate. 
and i would say it's like 90% accurate you just need to polish 10% of it which is really exciting to see so basically it will become a personal assistant for a business analyst and i think it is very important to take away the workload what you guys have on a daily basis uh, it's not just about drafting those emails and all it, it it's so time consuming your job sorry so i think it will going to help in 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 that space uh taking the example of right now uh we all go onto the open ai portal search for uh, like we ask certain questions to chat gpt it gives you the response and then you get it back so right now it's in very early stage that we are just uh getting the responses and since it's a very new thing so we are all are loving it and going back to the uh portal to see the exciting responses but i would say the real benefit of it you know from, of chat gpt will uh, will be seen when it is integrated with many of the daily used applications so just imagine i think everyone uses different applications <clears throat> based on the organization so just imagine you are you are a microsoft you are in, within the microsoft ecosystem you use dynamics 365 on a daily basis and within dynamics 365 we have all the microsoft applications connected together within that you have got chat gpt features as well which will which will make your life very easier so you need not to go out of your ecosystem within that you are just searching everything it is suggesting you things what you can do here is the email which i created for you here is the meeting summary here is the functional requirement document i created based on your conversation it will be like so fascinating to see everything within this uh uh closed box and uh can just move on to the next slide harini yeah so here i've mentioned like how can you access chat gpt features apart from just going on to the open ai portal so recently microsoft has launched two of the main things one of their program is microsoft copilot program which is uh, nothing but uh, microsoft dynamic 365 system becoming more smarter with chat gpt features ai powered chat gpt features where you will get everything what i just mentioned uh, as a package so so that you need not to go out of it keep searching uh, for things it will auto suggest you uh, things it will draft an email automatically for you and uh, also will suggest you where are the changes you should should be required within your document also uh, microsoft has recently launched one more thing which is uh, just today i was reading microsoft has launched a application called as loop which is uh, very exciting for uh, you know when you are in an organization you manage different projects so loop application will gonna keep keep your projects isolated from each other and it will create a separate workspace for you where you will be uh, having your teams your chats your files your documents everything at one place once you are done with the meetings chat gpt will automatically create your uh, meeting notes your functional documents it will store within that hierarchy which will be very cool so just the public review has been released but soon it will become more smarter and once it is launched fully you will see the magic of chat gpt so entire thing what i want to convey here is uh, you won't be able to see the benefits of it until it is you know a uh, package with certain applications or business applications like microsoft did you will soon soon see uh, chat gpt attached to many other applications google will uh, will be coming with its own features uh, any other tool you are using for development environment you will going to see uh, those things uh, in the near future from the developer perspective if i talk about you know uh, if a developer is working on some code so what used to happen previously is if i get stuck somewhere i want to see the syntax or something i'll straight away go to google will ask uh, will query something on google it will return few links and then i'll and the first link will be stack overflow i think that's that's like every developer's uh, favorite part they they will just open the stack overflow and will uh, try to copy the code just imagine a situation when you are within your development environment let's suppose i'm using visual studio for my development and they are just there itself i have a chat gpt uh, enabled feature where i need not to even go out of my ecosystem straight away it will auto suggest me where exactly my code is uh, failing where is my syntax failing so instead of going to uh, stack overflow on google stack overflow then searching from many other links it will auto suggest the best replacement for the code so i think from developers perspective 
the hardest part is debugging the core and i think chat gpt will gonna solve lot of lot of uh, issues uh, there so this is again one of the application from developers perspective so these are quite few uh, examples which you we should uh, you will see in uh, coming future so this is this was one of the example which i tested with chat gpt model so i uh, so this is a verbal uh, communication so it says when our uh, like suppose it says when our customer is interested in one of the services i provide so this is uh, the client giving the requirements so the, the client want to be notified by email with the customer's data preview of what he or she want so they can prepare themselves to get in touch with uh, with the service proposal so and blah 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 there are so many uh, requirements they've given so the response from the chat gpt was very exciting here is a possible functional specification based on the given verbal description so see it has broken down it into uh, uh, with the headings so it says title notification of new orders to service providers and then description it gives whatever uh, the functional requirements are provided by the client and then it has again broken down it into functional requirements where it mention all the key things the app should email the provider wherever a customer is interested the email must include the customer's data and a preview of what the customer wants application must allow customers to schedule services directly in the applications so are you seeing like these are very uh, sort of exciting things which we haven't seen before even if you if you go on google and search for things you have to go on multiple links and it will always be a static response you get you do not get the response tailored to your requirement you have to do the modifications to make it uh make it or align it to your requirements but the chat gpt it is aligning with your requirement it is giving you response based on what you have asked it's not something which is someone else has used it and it's a, it's not a static response at all so i think this will be the game changer in the field of business analytics and from a uh, developer's perspective there are many other examples and i think hardy will also share quite a few things which uh, he has observed uh playing around with chat gpt i played around a lot uh from developer perspective and from a ba perspective and when i was trying to play around it i was like oh, okay this will gonna be a game changer but the question that comes up in everyone's mind is will it gonna replace my job what will i do if chat gpt is creating everything for me to be honest like i'll be very honest here i am in i'm working in automation as an automation architect now uh from past few years when automation just came especially robotics process automation when it came into the market you know there was a fuss about it like it will going to take away all the jobs what will we do as a business to you know when we are just doing sort of work that is just copy pasting from here and here to there but to be honest from past 4 5 years in this field i haven't seen even a single job going away it's just that it is increasing the productivity within the organization it's not creating anything which is uh which is just taking out the job it is upskilling people it is upskilling people it is making sure that people are still in the jobs and they do something more productive so same case here any new technology advancement that comes it always has pros as well as cons but it's it's not about you know taking away the jobs it is helping you in doing your work so you can do something more productive so let's suppose uh, you you are a dynamic 365 uh, dynamic 365 customer and when you get these chat gpt features and when it is helping you a lot some one one day or the other like you know when you're working on it you will see that you will you will think from inside oh if this is creating everything like you will be a bit worried that you know i might lose my job but slowly when this these things become mature enough your organization structure change the way you work change changes and then when they know okay these things are being handled by the chat gpt bot you get to do something else which will be more productive which chat gpt cannot do things like you know right now chat gpt cannot create process maps you have to provide the inputs you have to provide the inputs uh, you need to uh, create your entire flow it cannot do uh, it cannot do everything on its own so these are the things like you know i keep hearing these things like from people on linkedin and everywhere else like it is i am a bit worried that you know i might lose my job but that's not the case at all it just gives you an opportunity to upskill yourself 
at the end of the day these all tools need the right inputs and as an automation and to say as i believe these all things the more automation do it's like you have to give the correct input otherwise it's like garbage in garbage out you give the wrong input you will definitely get uh, something which you don't want to see at all it will create a mess so this garbage in garbage out thing works perfectly uh, from automation perspective whether it's come to chat gpt or any sort of ai uh, ai sort of models uh, but there are few instances where i heard uh, in the past that you know uh, there were four or five jobs that were uh, people were laid off because of automation but if you look at the real reason it's not just automation it can be something else as well it's easy to blame ai in automation that is taking away the jobs and all it it can be something else you, you never know within the organization it can be something very simple that okay business was not uh, going up we, we 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 were not in profit it can be one of the reasons but it's not just ai in automation so my uh, my suggestion here is be keep yourself accommodated to use such technologies because you can't stop these technologies to uh uh you know come these they will keep coming and they will keep upgrading the point is we have to accommodate ourselves with these ever evolving technologies try to make use of it as much as possible and 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 have fun make your life easier with these things so uh i think that would be my message and if you have uh, any sort of questions happy to take up after the session or uh, uh, maybe after hardy uh how do you explain your things and let me know what do you think of chat gpt in the chat here i'll be very excited to see what different responses i get my my point of view for chat gpt is very clear it's mostly the positive side awesome thank you so much ronak um are there any questions or anyone wants to ask um ronak or anyone wants to share anything yeah, I'd like to share a video that I saw on YouTube, if I may. This, um, yes. There's a lady who published a, a video on YouTube. She's a, a business analyst from South Africa, given uh, her accent. And she programmed the bot to, she fed it um, the vision of a project, um, the, the aims of the project, the KPIs, and a number of inputs. And that was to inform, to to build, to build the um, the data set, and then she proceeded to produce more and more refined requirements based on that, and then turn the requirements into user stories. And you know, she asked it to pro to produce it in the format of tables, and then copied those into Excel. So she went a long way. It took a fair bit. Well, I thought it took a fair bit of effort because. I wouldn't have known how to phrase the questions. She did it okay. in 30 minutes, but there's, there's a bit of an art in prompting the bot. The exactly. Quality, yeah. So do you want to exactly. explain on that? Prompting? Yeah. 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 So I was just telling the same thing. So when I was also playing around with chat GPT, it's like how you frame or phrase your question, it, it completely changed the response. The more accurate and more you are to the point while asking questions, the more accurate answer it will be. So uh, when you ask for functional requirements, you have to be very accurate about, you know, you are talking about this specific uh, uh, specific application and you want in this way, and it will change your complete answer. So it will, it will never repeat your answer. This is again, one of the things which I observed. When you frame the same question, you went to chat GPT again and again, it will give you always a different answer in a different structure as well. So as I said before, like with these bots and AI coming into the picture, it's very important how you, give the inputs because the more correct or the more closer you give the inputs, the more better outcome you will get. Even from the RPA perspective, when I see the day you start giving it the wrong inputs or like, you know, slightly vague sort of input, a uh, bot won't be able to tackle it. It will straight away give you some sort of garbage dump out of it. So you have to be, that's where, uh, you know, uh, the role of any, any role would, uh, matter most whether it's a BA or a developer you have to your work is to give the correct input so you can leverage more of these tools otherwise it will again be a, a simple manual process and a very good question yeah I completely agree with that it, it, it does happen so. great question Veronique and thanks Ronak anyone else 
Abhi, do, is are there any questions in the chat? That um, I sorry, can I just um ask Rena a question? Do you know any uh corporates or organization have implement ChatGPT um uh, in their uh, network, like their uh virtual network or more like oh, yeah. lighting network rather than um in the public? Yeah. So oh, as I as I yeah. said as I said before, like you know. When you say has someone has any organization leverage chat deep chat GPT, so the straightforward answer is they may or may not. If they are, let's suppose they are a Microsoft shop, they are using the Microsoft Microsoft system like Dynamics 365. I would say it has already been included in, in their package because Microsoft has already released the chat GPT features within the Dynamics 365 ecosystem. So which means they do already have have the features to use it. Now it depends the developer or a BA if they're leveraging it or not. But I see, uh, like I have personally uh, in the public review, I've personally seen how it, it is being utilized. But for now, uh, it's very hard for organizations to adapt these technologies instantly. It it takes a time uh, because organizations takes time uh, until you know they feel this tech technology is mature enough to be used because there are certain things like you know governance and all these things come into the picture when, it, when I talk about the uh, bigger organizations. So uh, those governance things, those all things, your policies need to be update, updated before you leverage such, such, such technologies. Great, thanks for that. Yeah. All right. If you want to uh, ask the question or type it on the chat. Peter, uh, if you have a question, chat it up, uh, chat on, put it on the chat. More than happy to read it out. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Um, does anybody have questions? Please put it in the chat and um, over to Hadi, our next speaker. Um, Thank you, Harini. Proceed. Yeah, as we discussed, uh, AIs are uh, maybe they are reducing the BA jobs or, or maybe not. So it's the topic that we want to cover here. And the uh, other thing that we want to discuss is what a BA needs to not replace by AI. It means that some of the AIs could replace BA. So stay tuned with that. And if uh, they are replacing the B uh, BAs. Uh, is ChatGPT is the only AI tool that uh, could help BAs to uh, stay in the market? It's another question that we can answer here. So could you please go to the next slide? Yeah. As you can see in the pictures, uh, the effect of automation uh, on jobs really depends on your occupation. Reports that you can see here on the slides suggest that in, uh, the automation could replace more than half of the mining jobs in the next decades. The mining industry is already using automated loaders and tunnel boring systems, and it's testing fully autonomous long distance trains uh, to carry materials from the mine to a port. Eliminating the need for workers to do these tasks. Another example is the truck, taxi, and delivery drivers. They also need to worry about that because on-demand car services like Uber likely will rely entirely on self-driving cars in the future. Many physical labor jobs replaced by ro robots so far in the manufacturers. AI is analyzing large number of legal documents so people with other occupations like accountants could become easily replaced. And you can see mail carriers, jewelers, workers and the, even farm laborers, they may completely be replaced by robots in the future. But as you can see in the right picture, in, in, based on the research that from PwC, we can see some good news. And it, the good news says that the technology will lead the, to the certain of a nearly equal number of jobs, but it depends on what occupation we are working in the industries. So. Keep a, keep a look on the slide because it will help you to understand what is the scope of the industry that you are working at the moment and make sure that you are in the waves of the technology. 
you can see the education and the rest of the uh, industries could be affected. So in the next few slides, I started to have an interview with ChatGPT and ask different questions from that bot to see how we can challenge ourselves with some questions that could help us to understand about ChatGPT. Could you please go to the next slide? Yeah. One of the questions uh, that I, I had from ChatGPT, and I ch check it with the other research in the market, uh, about 20 jobs that could be replaced by ChatGPT in the near future. And I asked that, that bot to create a table with the list of them and order them based on the uh, potential replacement. So one of them was the administrative clerks, the, those people that they are typing something or uh, as Ronak mentioned, copying and pasting something in the different files. Currently with the APIs and the AI, it's automated and they are losing their jobs. The other one is customer service representatives. They are uh, working with the customer service and uh, the things that is being affected is the patients because the humans, uh, Currently, they are in. Uh, currently, people, when they are talking with the other people and the customer representatives, they they are not patient because it takes sometimes to do the analysis before answering to the questions to the, from the customers in the call centers. And uh, the other one is a translator. Uh, they are working in language services and having different language or accents is another issue that could be replaced by a robot. I can. Uh, introduce some bots that they are doing that part very well. And the content writers, uh, some of the AIs like ChatGPT, they are using creativity to create some contents for the bloggers, for the different people that, or even for the people, for the authors that they are writing books. So it's another challenge that those people will lose their job in the future because currently you just need to ask from a bot to create a content for your LinkedIn page for your website, for your blog, or any other contents that you need, even for, for example, some dialogues for your TikTok video. The, uh, the fifth one is the social media managers, uh, same to the previous one, because in, in social media management, you can create some automation and use those um, um, marketing uh, plans automated, so they will lose their job very soon if they are not using the bots correctly. The other one is the PIAs. PIAs are, are administratives and because of the organization skills that they have, they may lose their job because uh, they need to be updated with the latest technology. And you can see the rest of the other things. The other interesting one was graphic designers. I thought that they have a good job and they can be creative and they can survive with, with this area. But it seems that the AIs currently are creating some creative content like DALI, which is being introduced very well in the future. And they are replacing uh, graphic designers as well. And the legal people is another one that is uh, uh, being replaced in the future by some bots if they don't update their skills. I will mention about the skills uh, at the end of this table. And the other one is market research analysis. Some of the BAs, they are doing that part. So they should be aware about that because uh, those analytical, analytical skills at the moment uh, is being replaced by some AI's tools. So they can use those tools to stay in the market. And the real estate agents is another one, interesting one, because uh, the bots can sell some specific people, uh, some specific products to the, to, to the customers, to the people, based on the uh, requirements that they are gathering from the different people, creating personas and suggesting the right product to them instead of having sales as kids. So you, in this table could be more and more, but the people that they can survive in this uh, AI era, they should improve their technical skills. I'm not saying that every mining job or any person that is working in mining or in other areas, they should be a developer, but they need to increase their uh, domain knowledge of technology, especially using a specific tool sets that could help them to make easier 
jobs for themselves and uh, work better with being more productive so they can stay in the market. And uh, another research was saying that people that they want to stay in the same job for more than next two decades, they should have higher IQ rates range to survive in the market. This was another interesting point. Can you please go to the next one? Yeah, I've got, I've asked another question and asked from ChatGPT, do you want to replace BAs? And she, uh, she or he replied to me uh, with the things that I was prepared for that. And it says that if you want to stay as a BA, you need to improve your mm, some sort of the communication skills or interpersonal skills because a BA is working with different stakeholders. A chatbot or a AI can't work with different stakeholders at the same time. They are not in that level that they can work closely with the stakeholders to gather the requirements, understanding the processes that they are using, finding the right communication approaches or providing some recommendation for them that could solve their problems. So a BA has a high level of the human interaction and communication skills. Uh, so chatbots or AIs can't affect that part for next few decades, I can say, because at this stage, they, they are just learning. So uh, in the future, it's unlikely to replace BA jobs. Could you please go to the next one? Okay, so if ChatGPT is not replacing us, how we can use it to make a better world for other people? ChatGPT was saying that we can use AIs for data analysis. As I mentioned, it, they can use the, the, that that's AI tools. They can read a lot of documents, do some analysis on the documents, and provide some summary, as Ronak mentioned, or other things that we can use as a summarizing or getting some point action items on the different documentation, doing some document analysis for us, or any other analysis that is related to the data, for example, it's analyzing some data that we gathered on the different tables, compare them together and provide the result regarding the differentiation or some calculation based on the uh, entries. The other one is uh, creating reports. It's another interesting part of the chat GPT. You can ask them to create a report based on your requirements and you can provide some uh, graphs for you to have some analyze on, analyze on your data as a result and you can provide that result to the uh, people that they want to see that visualization. And the third one is the decision support. If you are not sure about which, for example, if you want to do some cost benefit analysis for different products or you, you, you are helping some solution architects to uh, provide some uh, paper uh, options or something similar to that, that you need help to have some analysis and you are a decision maker or you are a support person for a decision maker in the organizations, you can use AIs to help you to uh, have a better understanding about the, for example, markets or uh, the other vendors that you can find in the market. And the other one is uh, NLP. Yeah, as Ronak mentioned, NLP could be implemented in any other tools and they can be integrated with other tools as well. Uh, for example, in the future, when we can see there is some plugins for Jira that could help you to provide some user stories those information that you it's missing on your user stories or epics and uh, there is some missing links between the parent links and uh, in your boards etc those bots will help you to make it much easier and it's in progress or other one is could you be promise a, i'm hanging out sorry to interrupt i'm hanging out for this one because my backlog is a nightmare so i'm really i'm looking forward to this Yes, there is some plugins that it's being implemented. And the other interesting thing is Zapier. Zapier is a test tool that is has AI behind that. So it could help you to automate your testing process as well. So there is a lot of uh, news around that. And uh, there is another, I, today I read another article relating to integration between ChatGPT and GitHub, which is so interesting because the developers, they can use ChatGPT to create uh, GitHub processes and upload their codes and see which one has some bugs, etc. It will do that analysis for them. So 
one of the news is saying that developers will be replaced. I'm not believing that, but it's a gossip around that. And uh, there is a lot of usage that you, you, know, you can see when we can see that there is a lot of integration between different systems. So a chat GPT could be integrated with different things. For example, in the future, when you are chatting with your colleagues and you can't remember what uh, you said, for example, two weeks ago regarding some of the projects, ChatGPT will help you to search on the history of your chats between different people and provide the details that you are missing. It could be one of the things that is in progress. Yeah, could you please go to the next one? Yeah. So, for example, uh, another example could be writing SQL queries or having some HTML code to prototype for your end users, or even using ChatGPT to uh, create Excel formulas that will provide some data for you, or give some Excel formula to uh, ChatGPT and ask them to analyze what's the outcome of these um, calculations, or even uh, providing some sample JSON uh, codes to put in your APIs and get the result to see how your APIs is working or not, or any other things. Also, it will help you to, for example, you have an interview and if you are not very qualified with, for example, queries for providing some information in ETL, it will help you to understand how you can create a specific queries to find the answer of the questions. And also uh, another good example is like creating and uh, identify test cases for the different softwares and different scenarios. For example, you can ask ChatGPT, which I did, uh, to provide a test, a list of test cases for a system, for example, a panel or administration panel or website that has a login page and, and for example, those test cases for reset password, et cetera, uh, and ChatGPT provided those scenarios for me. Or even, uh, for example, you are, you are a BA and you are a technical BA, but you want to describe and present something for the stakeholders that they are not very technical. So you can ask ChatGPT to make a simplified version of the topic and ask in, and put it in your slide and presentation. Also, there is more products that I want to describe them later that could help you to have a better presentations. And the, the last one, but not least, uh, the if when you are uh, working on XML uh, codes, you, you, can, you can see a lot of complex codes. And so if you wanna decode the patterns, for example, finding a specific part of the code, you can ask ChatGPT to provide that detail. So for example, you are looking for some specific image and you can describe, you can put the code there uh, in ChatGPT and ask to find the right answer that you are looking for. Here are just some examples, and I want to describe more products in the next slide. Yeah, the interesting part. I want to introduce some AI tools that could help BAs to work better. As you know, ChatGPT is one of them because ChatGPT has a lot of usage so far, and it, uh, the reason that you know it more is the marketing behind that, but there is other tools that you, you may not know, but they are good for the BAs. For example, Cogram is another one, uh, especially if you are working in the project management or you are, are working in an agile way of working and you need collaboration. Cogram is a good tool because it will help product, own, product owners, platform managers, project managers, and BAs to automate repetitive tasks and simplify workflows. So it will improve the team collaboration and we help the people to manage their deadlines. And the other one is Compose AI. It's we create some content for the marketing or the other, for example, you wanna create some artifacts for your project. It will help you to create those uh, content and get approval from managers. Uh, it will create a lot of uh, pro different products or artifacts. It depends on the, on the requirement that you have. For example, you are looking for some user guides or manuals for a specific product that you want to publish very soon in your project. So it, it, you can rely on that because it will save a lot of time and effort for you to create those content. It will help you to find that. And even for example, if you can ask them to uh, create some 
videos, it will search on the uh, YouTube and find the right videos that could help you to create your content. Glassp is another one. It will uh, help you to, as a BA, it will help you to do the market research and have some competitive analysis with other people. For example, I, I, I'm using a specific product. For example, I'm using a specific uh, security product and I wanna compare it with the other uh, products in the market to provide the support from solution architects or the platform manager or product owner to choose which one is better. So it will help you to understand which product is better in the market by analyzing the market data and identifying trends and the customer needs, feedbacks, requirements, etc. that you can see in the slide. The other interesting one is Grammarly. I think it's more famous uh, after ChatGPT because it's helping a lot of people to writing and editing, even uh, providing some grammar suggestions, provide, uh, correcting your spelling errors or something, some type of mistakes that you have, it will help you to understand it. And for, for providing these slides, it helped me to uh, complete the presentation. It's, uh, it's very common and it has a lot of uh, add-ons like the Google uh, extension or uh, websites, but some of the organizations are banned Grammarly because it's uh, a cloud version and it will upload your content on their, web, on their uh, server and do the analysis and then return the recommendation to you. A slide is, uh, a slides AI is another interesting one because it will help uh, BAs to creating engaging and visually appealing presentations by AI that is in, embedded behind that uh, tool. So it will help you to, for example, if you are working on this, uh, your presentation, it will advise which content should, uh, should be in a specific slides or, for example, replacing a specific slides or having some sort of the storytelling for you to make it more <coughs> interesting for your audience. A slide is, I is another one. <coughs> Excel formula bot is another uh, AI that you can use as the VA to automate complex Excel tasks, for example, doing a very complex calculations for you and make sure that uh, some quick analysis that you are required for, instead of putting a lot of information or loading in Tableau or other tools, you can use this bot to run over your spreadsheet uh, Excel files and find the information that you want as a result. <clears throat> there are just some examples. Could you really go to the next one? Accio. Accio is a, uh, another data analysis tool that you can use and it will uh, offers a low code platform. So it will be some sort of the typing with the AI and it will help you like ChatGPT. And it will help you to deploy AI models and to make sure that the information that you wanna have is uh, reliable. And also it will do some analysis on the customer behaviors and trends. So if you wanna compare the uh, different products, it's another tool that you can use for uh, your projects. Quillbot is another one, which is similar to Grammarly, so it will help you to provide some suggestions regarding the sen sentence structure in your documentation or vocabulary that you have. It, they are competing to each other uh, with Grammarly. A smart writer is another one, is uh, similar to Grammarly or and uh, Quillbot and it will help BAs to write tasks by generating AI powered text. The interesting part from a smart writer, which I'm using, is it's an, an add on. It has an add on that could, you can add to your LinkedIn page. So when you are reacting so, to your uh, LinkedIn posts, it will provide some suggestions. Instead of just pressing the like button, it will suggest some customized reply text. So you, you can ask that AI to create those um, creative content for you. Even when you are writing uh, in your LinkedIn and you wanna create a post, it will help you to have some specific posts for yourself as a BA that will highlight your profile for the recruiters. And like image AI is another one which is interesting because it will help you to provide some uh, design and the presentation content like the icons, like the app icons uh, or logos or etc. It will help you to by generating uh, image that uh, you will provide the text and they will, that bot will create the image for you. Like Dali, but uh, a stock image has different uh, 
outcomes because it's working with a for to create logos or the PowerPoint and image. Poise is another one. It's help you uh, to uh, do some analysis on the data. So it will be easier for you to analyze your data by uh, uh, task by providing a suite of the AI power tools. For, for example, you are looking for data cleansing or you want to uh, visualize your uh, data or uh, you want to create something, some machine learning model to analyze your data in the future, you can use POIST uh, in your PA day-to-day -day life. UIZARD is another one, which is so interesting because it will create the user journey for you as a BA. For example, if you have some specific persona and you want to create prototypes or wireframes for your application or your website, it will create some suggestion for you. For example, you have a login page, but you are missing the reset password button. So it will provide those suggestions for you. Or you are creating a wireframe, but you don't know what's the, for example, text for that button. Or what should I put in the help sentence or something like that? Uh, the bubbles that is will be presented to the end user. Some sort of the content that you want to put on your wireframe or prototype, uh, UIZARD will help you to customize and suggest some useful ideas for you. Then last one in this slide is Fireflies. Fireflies is a AI that helps you as a BA to manage your meetings. For example, you can create some tasks for that bot, so it will be uh, in your meeting. It will invite your uh, your audiences and also summarize the in meeting outcome and action items based on the conversation that is happening in your meeting. So it will be a good tool set for you if it's approved to be attended in your meetings. Could you please go to the next one? <clears throat> I'm trying to be on time. Hugging Face is another tool set that uh, using NLP. So you can create your own AI or chatbot based on NLP. So you just need to link it to the, your applications. And so you will have an AI in your, for example, websites or other applications that you want to implement as a VA. That robot is an automated machine learning. So it's an automated machine learning that will create some predictive models or some uh, business process that you already have, you just need to upload the, your business process description and it, it, it will provide some uh, optimized process map for you and will help you to create some decision around your data based on the projects that you want to work on it. IBM Watson is another uh, famous one because it's supported and implemented by IBM. IBM Watson study, study is a, some sort of the uh, product tool set that you can use as a BA, but it's more machine learning type. But it has a, a feature which is called business automation workflow. So you can use the AI powered platform that is uh, supported by NLP like ChatGPT, and it will provide some suggestion regarding the uh, work that you want to have, for example, analyzing your data or providing some recommendation about the business processes that you have. Synthesia is another interesting one for me because I used it to create some content on the uh, for how to because it has some avatars for different people with more than 60 languages. So you can select the character that you want to have uh, you want to have and it will provide some video description like what I'm doing. And it will be a bot that will read your text as a person and uh, will support your training material if you are creating some training materials. If you, for example, you are creating some user manuals, so, uh, and you wanna have a face on your video that you are capturing, you just need to use this AI and put the text and that uh, text to a speech uh, AI system will create uh, a voice uh, based on the se your selected language and it will be added to your video if you want. I use it and I really like it. Resume AI is another one which is interesting. Uh, it will help you to create customized uh, CV for yourself as a BA. So it will help you to create some 
sort of the highlighted CVs based on the job description that you want to put in the input of that AI. And last but not least, it's Otter AI, which is my friend nowadays, uh, is a bot that currently you can see in the meeting. It's capturing our conversation and providing summary for me. And it will describe who is talking more than me. And it will help me to increase the contribution in the meetings next time. So it says that Hadi is talking too much. So for example, ask someone else to talk about the topics or ask some questions. So it is a very good, but you need to integrate it with other systems. And some of the organizations are not allowing to add that first that spot in their meetings because it's rec it records the conversation. And the interesting one, in with the new feature that they are releasing, it will detect which microphone uh, microphone is uh, open, and based on the email address that is attached to that user, we recognize who talked about which topic, and will create a personal based on that person that is talking in the meeting. It's in the future. You please. Oh, before going to the next one, if you need more example like this one, I try to capture those that is more related to the BAs. But if you want to have more interactive AI landscape to understand which AI systems is working in different areas, for example, in the health industry or other industries, you can go to that link that I put at the bottom of the slide. And I think the slide pack will be shared with you after the meeting. Uh, so you can go to that link and see the other systems that is integrated with the AIs. <coughs> Would you please go to the next one, which is the picture that is created by DALI, another AI tool that when you ask the, the bot to create a specific picture, it will help you to create the picture that you are looking for. I created a lot of posters for myself because it's so interesting. You can use that bot to create everything that you want. Be more creative. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you so much, Hari. Um, that was really um, eye-opening for us and also nice to see many creative things from the bot. Um, does anybody have any questions that they want to ask and clarify? Yeah, around, um, around the limitations, not so much of the data model, but in terms of IP, um, yeah, particularly, particularly in terms of IP, because when we train a model and we feed the bot all that information, it's usually, I mean, we have to sign NDAs as business, as business analysts to, to get a job. Um, so I don't suppose we can just copy paste business rules and, um, you know, code and things like that willy nilly. Do you have any um, recommendations around that? I mean, I'm assuming companies will come up with guidelines. I'm, I'm writing some for where I'm working at the moment, but I think that's a concern because yeah. essentially you're telling, you're telling the bot how your company functions. Yeah, exactly. Some organization, they are very close about the new technologies, and, but some of the organization that they, they have a small sizes of the employee numbers, so they are more flexible about that. If they don't need to do those legislation or the governance around the, using the specific tool set in their systems. Uh, it depends on the organization that they are working, but those legal conversation is continuing. And I think in the future, we will be in the good position, like the, for example, driving uh, a smart cars, it is another one. and. I think when we get that legal agreement with different organization, I think it will be useful. As Ronak mentioned, it's part of the Microsoft package, uh, ChatGPT, but other tools, they need to get approval because some of the organization, they have some security concerns or privacy concerns or some sort of uh, regulations, et cetera. So they are concerned about that. But in the future, I think we will, uh, we will have some updated rules around that. Someone, uh, I think I answered your question, yeah? Yeah. Okay. The other, uh, I saw another message uh, regarding using BARD. BARD is a product from Google, but I think it's closed for Australia at the moment. So in the future, we can use it. But uh, currently, if you go to the BARD site, it says that it's closed for your country. 
No, if you use a VPN, it's not. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, where was that link you mentioned to check AI for the other industries? Sorry? Where was the link you mentioned? Link? In the previous uh, slide, mad.firstmount.com. Oh, when, when you share the slides, it'll be there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We have yes. Ask yes. Uh, oh, sorry, Abby. Hey, Abby, how are you? <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, I was just wondering some of these tools allow you to create creative content, right? Image and things like that. Are we free to, to use that content into whatever presentation or things that we want to do with it? Or it comes with like license or special IP thing? Or... Yeah, that's a good question. In the first slide that I was created, uh, I asked ChatGPT to provide the license, uh, licensing structure for each of those tools. And it's written with some errors because some of the products, uh, they are free and then they will provide some, for example, they have some trials and then they will use licensing. So uh, as a generic answer, uh, they, are, they will start with a uh, free version. Uh, for example, DALL-E as an example that you can see in the picture, it will provide a specific numbers of the image that you can create. And after that, it will be a paid version and the licenses, monthly licenses, and hourly licenses, et cetera. But as a, as a start point, all of them are free, 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 or they will be totally free, or some of them, they will start with lower numbers of the, for example, just uh, $10 per month. And then when you, you increase the users or the, you, your usage, you need to upgrade your plan. So, uh, a start point for most of them is free. For example, Otter, which is attending in this meeting, uh, they have a generic, a basic plan, which will help you, I think, to capture the meetings for 600 minutes per month. And then if you wanna move to a paid version, you can have more flexibility with the meetings, et cetera. And it will unlock a lot of features, for example, expert, export your five in different templates or types, et cetera. So they have, some of them, they have some free plans and then they would switch to that one. Yeah. To uh, just, yes, just my to question add was a, a, bit, a bit around this, but a bit more about the intellectual property yeah. of the image, for example, that they're generated. Are you, can you use these image yeah, in your so, presentation without fear of uh, breaking some sort of copyright yeah. or intellectual yeah. property? That, that's, just just to add there, Pascal, I think uh, many, many people are worried about IP and other stuff. Just to clarify one thing, like, uh, so chat GPT is not an open source application, first thing. I think many people think chat GPT is an open source application. So yeah, it is started owned. that, right? Uh, no, so it's, it's not an open source application. It's, uh, it's owned by open AI. It's just that it's free to use for us, but the source code is not available. Uh, so any application which is called as open source application, which means the source code is available and anyone can contribute to, to it. So the source code is owned by OpenAI and Microsoft has acquired OpenAI. So uh, it's, it's not an open source application, first of all. So I think there won't be much issues in the future about IP and other stuff. Uh, it's just that uh, any other application who want, want to utilize the uh, services of ChatGPT there will be a collaboration and a governance governance model along with it. I think that will clarify the things of uh, if you can use it or not. Uh, but I think there won't be much of issues regarding IP and other stuff, specifically for chat GPT, because it hasn't been released as an open source application. The problem comes around when uh, any application is being uh, you know launched as an open source. That's where all these questions around licensing, uh, whether I can use it or not, that comes into the picture. But I, I don't think much of issues will gonna come uh, when it comes to chat GPT. Right. Um, Rene. Yes. Uh -huh. um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Rene, did it, the history started with Elon Musk owning um, that first? So it was open, or open but then, uh, when it was bought, then it was not open. That's why it started off, inherited its name from as OpenAI when Elon Musk um, came in. Yeah. But when it was taken over, 
then it wasn't. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Uh, no. So the thing is, when they've launched uh, publicly, the day they've launched publicly, from that day onwards, the source code uh, was not available at all. It wasn't yeah, available at all. Yeah. When. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, that yeah. So. Yeah. That that's the reason. Like, uh, because the thing is, when uh, since it's available for free to use for anyone, people think that it's an open source application because it's free to use. You can interact with it. It's not at all an open source application. I think this is the confusion. Like I interacted with few other people in the past. People think it's an open source application, and these things will, you know, uh, create issues regarding licensing and other stuff. But I don't think so. That will gonna happen because every every other organization who will who want to leverage Chat GPT features, there will be a strong collaboration uh, within them, and those uh, intellectual property rights and everything will be taken care of. Thanks. I think I think that if if I understood the question earlier about the the intellectual property, I know that yeah, there's two parts. The information yeah. we put in that needs to be covered by policies. I'm assuming companies say intellectual property. You know, just like if you're going and talking to someone, putting something on a disc, putting it into a chat, you know, GPT. You know, they would you they would have. They would think it would be covered by those policies, but yes, they definitely need to be tightened up, and um, in, yeah, uh, to to include this sort of more interactive, conversational. But I think the other question was about if it generates um, that image. For example, we just came off that image there, that funny picture. Can that be used? Is that who who owns that image? I think that was the that was probably the question. So using that or getting it to generate something for you. Who is the owner of that, and can it be used freely? I think if I if I can summarise what the question was. See, you could you could be a chat yes, GPT yourself. Yeah. I'm not talking. <laughs> exactly, uh, and again uh, on that, like let's suppose so right now you are interacting directly from the OpenAI platform, so OpenAI is responsible for that. Uh, I would say for now, but when it when it comes to uh, applications like you know if you're use leveraging chat GPT within uh, uh, Microsoft application, then Microsoft will be the owner for that. Yeah. Because, yeah. One thing, just one thing to add, for example, it, uh, when I'm using the new Bing, I'm using ChatGPT behind that, and when I'm asking some question, it will do some research on different websites and provide the result uh, as a summarized result for me and will ask the next question to help me to understand what's the next step about that. So Bing now is the responsible for the content that they are gathering from different websites. I'm just using a search engine. So using a, a specific search engine and getting the result from the search engine is not creating any legal issue for you. Right. Bahar, you've got your hands raised. Do you want to ask any questions? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, first, thank you, Ronak and Hadi, for your great presentation. Um, my question is regarding um, confidentiality. So basically, we, as a BA, we using, you know, we're working for a client, um, like, or our organization. So we sharing, uh, like asking questions regarding the requirements and things. So we sharing our company's data um to the chat gbt so what do you think about um that part of like privacy and you know um uh, is that going to capture because Hadi, you mentioned uh, Geramili is using the data you know like um, some organization um banned using that so what about the chat gbt so it, if we sharing for example something asking some question and then uh, saying the organization name or you know using that kind of word is that going to be any problem or do you have any idea about that uh regarding Grammarly, because you are uploading all hold the document in a cloud version which is not part of the data center that that organization has access to that information is not acceptable but for ChatGBD, because you are putting some text, it's a text version, and it will analyze your text in that server and return the result to you. 
I don't think in the future both of them will be a big issue for the organizations, but because ChatGPT is the new one and they need to update their list of the actions around that, they are not banning ChatGPT at the moment. And because of the news behind the ChatGPT, there is a customer or end user demand to use it in the, in the same organization that I don't want to say the name. So uh, they are accepting ChatGPT to make the life of the employees easier, but they are not formally against that and they are not formally accepting it at the moment. So, okay, so right. a clear yeah. answer for you with the difference between them. But I can say that I've got an email to not use Grammarly, but I didn't get any email regarding ChatGPT. Right, okay. And uh, I have another question just uh, quickly. Have you used a paid one for um, ChatGPT or just like a free one can help us, you know, whatever we need? We need. What's, it, what's the like um, benefit of paid one? With the paid one, you are not waiting for any response uh, because it, it will be, you will be in the first person, in the QE or some prioritization method behind that or the algorithms. But uh, over the free version, you can get some errors. You can see some delays behind that. Uh, and they are saying that, for example, when they publish any news or any releases, you will be in the first of the line to get the latest update. I just use the free one. Yeah, and I think just to add there, uh, Hari, uh, so I think the biggest difference between the paid one and the free one I found is uh, it is the paid one is uh, you know more towards if you want to debug your code or something, it gives you the response correctly but whereas in the free one it, it is not much capable of giving you any sort of suggestions for your code if you ask chat gpt but in the paid one yeah it is it is capable of doing that so that's the difference which i noticed when when i i was playing around thank you Renak. thank you Heidi. thank you for your answers we have two questions from the chat so ash's question is in the current era where cybersecurity concerns are growing, what is your perspective of the usage of ChatGPT from a security perspective? Um, I think I would say, like, uh, again, it comes back to the same question as governance. So I think wait for the right governance model. If, if your organization hasn't communicated to you regarding anything about ChatGPT, so don't use it within your organization for now it can be it can go other way but uh, let let your organization communicate to you whether you are allowed to use chat gpt within your uh, working premises or working environment uh, otherwise it, it might go the other way around because yeah it is definitely a concern right now and once things are clear your organization has the right governance model around it then i think no issue uh, at all, but for now, definitely there is an issue and there are concerns around it. Yeah, as Ronak mentioned, uh, we should be at the at now. So uh, the current situation that I can see in some organization, though they have some center of excellence and they are providing some training material for using ChatGPT in their organization. And other organization, they are not saying anything about that, which means that they are doing some background process to provide some guidance around that. So it depends on the organization culture, to be honest. There, there is differentiation at the moment. Thanks, Claude. Uh, one question from Norman. What about bias? For example, ask chat GPT, what is the best chat bot? Will there be a concern about inherent screen of responses provided? Was that let me go let me go to check what it is uh, what about bias for example ask chat gpt what is the best chat what will there be concerns about having screen the responses <laughs> yeah i think uh the biasness is always there when whenever it comes to machine learning models and we have seen that in the past but for chat gpt i would say uh chat gpt is a bit 
uh, clever. If you ask certain questions, if it is not sure or something, it will literally give you that statement that I'm not sure about it and I won't be uh, biased about something. So it is it is giving you a response, uh, you know, which, which won't be biased at all. If it doesn't know anything, it will uh, straight away say that I, I don't want to be biased about something. I know about this thing, but I don't know about uh, the other comparisons. So I won't comment on that. And I have seen, like, I, I, I forgot the questions which I asked. It didn't knew about it, but it knew about something about one of the topic. It said, I know only about this topic, but I don't want to give you an answer accurately on that because I don't want to be biased uh, here. So I think uh, ChatGPT is a bit bit clever in giving the responses uh, uh, if you compare it with other, other chatbots because those are all trained on very limited data. But if it comes to ChatGPT, it is... I think only chatbot right now in the world like that has been trained on I don't know uh, millions trillions of uh, data sets. So yeah. it's, a, it's a bit clever, yeah. And I found another feature that I forgot to mention about that. Sorry about uh, the bots that you can see in the meeting. It will capture the image in the paid version. So if you, for example, if you are presenting something and uh, you want to change the slide, it will capture the image that is being presented to and add it to the notes. And also if you talk about the slide, it will capture another screenshot and add it to the a summary of the meeting. So you don't need to take a screenshots in the meeting or any other one in the meeting. It will help you to save a lot of time. Cool. Thank you so much, Hardy and Ronak. Um, Tang, you have got your hand raised. Do you want to ask any question? Um, thanks, Harini. Uh, so a question for Heidi. Um, for the, if I pronounce your name incorrectly. So just following up with the bias, um, you know, like Google, they have been biased for a long time. Every time we search something, they will like show result that they got paid for the advertisement. So is the chat um, GPT would be the same. Like if, for example, you ask for a repertoire doctor so that you can go and get your treatment, would um, the chat GPT be biased about that? Uh, it depends. For example, in some of the cases, I asked chat GPT to compare two products and uh, any analyzing behind that. And it says that because I some of the features that will affect the pricing of those products is not clear in the uh, front page of the websites, I can't rec uh, recommend which one is better or not. So yeah, it could be in the future another option for them, like you can see in the uh, search engines and it will say that uh, currently Bing, uh, Bing is saying that, for example, this information is reliable or not. I think yeah. in the future, we will have the same feature that you can see in the search result of the search engines. Yeah, and just, just to add on that, Hari, like uh, there was one more thing which I observed while I was searching a few things on ChatGPT. Uh, it gives you the references. So I asked a question, I think long back, uh, that, you know, uh, is there a job scarcity in Australia within these uh, scale skill set to chat GPT and then chat GPT referenced one of the report shared by ECS, Australian Computer Society. And then it gave, according to Australian Computer Society report dated this, 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 uh, these are the skill shortages uh, in Australia in this particular year. So I think uh, it tries to be clever, as I said before, it gives you the certain reference saying that according to this report, yeah, it is, but I'm not sure how things have changed because I am on, on, only trained until September, 2021 or whatever date it is. So it, it does give you the references. So uh, just to be on the safer side, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. So it's another follow-up question about uh, uh, confidentiality. With the data that we fit into ChatGPT, do they store those data? Does that data being stored for the session or like between the server forever? Yeah. Before uh, starting the session, they will say that we are capturing information to train the machine learning yeah. algorithms. So it's clearly that it will be saved somewhere. Yeah. Okay. I think Thanks. we do give consent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Ronak and Hadi, for 
delivering such an exceptional and valuable presentation about chatbot and also giving insights about other bots that are available in the automation and AI ecosystem. Um, I'm pretty confident that I'm, I can see a side of relief that the chat GPT will not replace my VA within my team. And I hope everyone here is also leaving this session with that side of relief. Um, so the key takeaway from this, I think the chat GPT or any other bots out in the automation and AI ecosystem are not just the platforms that will replace our jobs. They are just the tools that would enhance our productivity through its valuable contribution that, that might help us in our BA space. Um, so for any further questions, please feel free to send them through to our IIBA inbox and we'll reach out to our speakers, Ronak and Hadi, and we'll get back, we'll reply with the response as soon as we can. Also, you can reach out directly to Hardy and Ronak, um, and I'm sure they'll be happy to guide you through with any other questions. Um, over to Abby for other IIBA events. Oh, thanks. Thanks, everyone. <clears throat> thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, I'll quickly talk about the upcoming events. Uh, and yes, the slides will be definitely shared tomorrow uh, to your email, the email that you have registered. So the slides will be shared, guys. Uh, so we have some study groups happening in Sydney and Perth, but we are also planning some uh, study group in Brisbane. So that will start in July uh, for Agile extension as well as for uh, business data analytics. Uh, so once we have the events created, you will see a newsletter. Um, uh, Harini, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, so the main thing that I want to talk about is Festival of Business Analysis. Uh, I'm not very sure how many people have attended last year. Um, if you have attended, please put your hands up so I know how many people have attended. But for the people who haven't attended this, it's basically the entire day conference, in-person conference. Uh, there we will be talking about like business analysis and other related practices. We will have a hands-on workshop, speak events, uh, and things like that. So uh, in-person events in Brisbane is happening um, on 18th. Uh, but the, it's an entire five-day session, uh, which, which will happen online as well. And for different states, the dates are different. So I will show you guys the link um, so you can go and have a look at that as well. So if you are interested, um, you can go buy the tickets. Uh, I just share the link there. And also, if you're interested in like um, being a speaker, doing a workshop, there's expression of interest in that as well. Um, so go and register. And if you guys have any questions, reach out to us, all the emails. Um, so you can contact us through forba at australia.iaba.org. Uh, and the other event I want to talk to you guys about, we haven't published yet, but I thought I'll give you a heads up. We are planning to have a mock interview session uh, in early May. So it's basically, um, it's a speed mock interview. Like you'll take 10 to 15 minutes and you will have a panel of interviewers uh, from different companies. Some of them are recruiters, some of them are BA practice leads, some of them are lead BAs, uh, some of them are just a recruiters like from the uh, project itself. Um, so we will have a panel of interviewers, um, say three or two people for a panel, and it will be a mock short interview with you individually one-on-one uh, for 15 minutes. And at the end of the 15 minutes, they will give you actually a handwritten feedback on um, the strengths, or how you performed, and the things that you have to improve. Uh, it's an in-person event, uh, and the registration is going to be only 25 to 30 people, so we will not have much crowd. Uh, by next week, we will have the events posted on LinkedIn and other social media. So uh, if you are interested, please register to that as well. And if you go to the IABA website, you can see the other future events. Uh, cool. That's all from me. Um, any questions? Amazing. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for guys. Thanks, Harini, for organizing. I think it was our first event organizing this. Yes. Great. Thanks, Thanks Ronak. for coordinating everything. Definitely, ChatGPT cannot replace Harini. Thank you so much. We need you to organize. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm more confident now. Thank you, Ronak. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Take care, bye. Thank you.